Over the last one year, I've spent quite a bit of time traveling around Canada and experiencing everything this beautiful country has to offer. From stunning landscapes, great outdoors, oh, that did not last long, and delicious food to big cosmopolitan cities and friendly locals, there's a countless reasons why I think Canada is one of the best places to visit in the entire world. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you guys my top 7 recommendations for places you should consider adding to your itinerary when planning your next trip to Canada. <laughs> So starting off with Banff, if you've never heard of Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada, then you're in for a treat because there's nowhere else in the world that can compare to the stunning little mountain town nestled in the heart of the Canadian Rocky Mountains. Banff had been on top of my bucket list since the day I moved to Canada, so last year I finally decided to go there on a solo adventure and my jaw instantly dropped the moment I stepped foot into this heavenly town. This has got to be one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. It's been 20 minutes that I've been trying to get to this restaurant to eat, but I can't keep getting sidetracked. Literally every couple minutes I see this peak of the mountain and then I just start walking in a completely different direction. With stunning Rocky Mountain peaks, incredible hiking and skiing, turquoise lakes and an adorable little village, this town has something to offer for everyone. Depending on what you're interested in doing, Banff can be a year-round destination. If you're a nature lover, June through September will be the perfect time for you to visit as the weather is warm and welcoming and you'll also be able to see the serene blue lakes Banff is well known for. In the summer months when you come to this lake, this water right here is turquoise blue and I was kind of expecting that the water won't be as blue. Wow, this place is honestly like a winter wonderland. It feels like I'm in Narnia. As a budget traveler, I personally visited in October so I could take advantage of the off-season prices. I stayed at the Samson Hostel which is centrally located on Banff Avenue and for $30 a night I had a very comfortable bed to sleep in in a six-bedroom dorm where I also made tons of new friends from around the world. There is no shortage of hotels in Banff but I would highly suggest making your bookings in advance as the hotel prices are usually pretty high due to the touristy nature of this area. You can also consider staying in Canmore which is another picturesque town about 20 minutes a drive from Banff and the prices of hotels there are significantly cheaper because it's a little bit further away from all the action. I spent a couple of nights at the Malcolm Hotel in Canmore and oh boy was I impressed. I've done a few in-depth videos on places to visit in Banff and Canmore so if you guys want to check those out I will leave a link down in the description below. Vancouver is unlike any other city in the world. It is surrounded by majestic mountains, sparkling ocean, rainforest and yet still has the urban life that everyone craves. So I'm out here right now in downtown Vancouver guys and this place is just so insanely beautiful. You have like the tall buildings and all that, big city vibes which is great but then also you have so much nature around you. There's like, if you look behind me, there's literally like mountains right there. Then there's the water, the colors on the trees, just everything. So I think really that's what makes this place so unique because it gives you like the best of both worlds. You know, the big city vibes and also nature, which I don't think you find in a lot of other cities. I can say that I've been privileged enough to have traveled to quite a few cities around the world, but none of them ever appealed to me in a way that Vancouver did. One of the main reasons why I love this city so much is because you can get from the heart of downtown to the mountains and beaches within an hour, which makes it perfect for both city and nature lovers. Some of the things that are an absolute must do in Vancouver are strolling through Stanley Park which is also rated as the number one public park in the world by TripAdvisor and you can easily spend a whole day there and still not be able to see everything. It is the perfect place to get lost in nature and each new corner boasts stunning views of the city as well as the Pacific coastline. Stanley Park is also home to some of the best beaches in Vancouver. If you're into skiing and snowboarding, don't forget to visit the Grouse Mountain which is only 20 minutes a drive from downtown. Another one of my favorite spots in Vancouver is the Olympic Village which is located right on the waterfront and has so many great restaurants and you also get an incredible view of downtown. Now I can keep going on and on about things to do in Vancouver but maybe I'll leave that for a separate video as we still have quite a few more places to cover in this one. So next up, I want to talk about a place that I think is one of the most underrated places in all of Canada. At the northern tip of Nova Scotia, Cape Breton is a magical island with a spectacular coastline, rich culture and delicious seafood. It is truly one of Canada's best kept secrets and is a destination that should not be missed. One of the best things to do on this island is driving along the Cabot Trail which is a beautiful coastal highway that stretches up to 300 kilometers and circles around Cape Breton Highlands National Park. While you're driving on this highway, you will come across tons of wildlife, beaches, fishing villages, hiking trails and look off points that will absolutely blow your mind. There's a reason why Cabot Trail is rated as one of the most beautiful stretches of road in all of North America. While it's definitely possible to do the entire trail in just one day, I would highly suggest spending at least two to three days if you want to get the full experience of everything this place has to offer. Looks like a pretty good morning so far. Check out the 
view. Isn't that beautiful? So anyway, um, I'm just making some breakfast for everyone and then we're gonna be packing our stuff again and we're on the road. I think we're going kayaking today. I'm not sure if it's gonna work out because we were looking at this place online and it looks like they only do like guided tours. So I don't know, we still have to figure this out, but we're gonna be doing something regardless. In addition to hiking and the scenery, towns along the Cabot Trail offer year-round sports from kayaking and horseback riding to cross-country skiing and ice fishing. The best time to visit Cape Breton is during the summer months of July and August when the weather is warm and dry. One of the most popular of the numerous hikes in the area is the Skyline Trail which ends at a dramatic headland where the cliffs drop into the sea. Views are insane. That's crazy. It took us around 30 minutes to hike all the way up here from where our car was, but it is honestly so worth it. If you like what you see, come and get it with me. Niagara Falls is a geological wonder and one of the most famous waterfalls in the world. It is made up of three different waterfalls with Horseshoe Falls being on the Canadian side and the other two on the American side. Together they combine to produce the largest water flow rate of any waterfall in the world. This incredible town was also my home for the first two years after moving to Canada and I enjoyed every moment of it. When in Niagara, you cannot miss walking around Clifton Hill which is a small touristy strip with lots of lights, restaurants and attractions including a massive sky wheel. Just walking down Clifton Hill right now which is one of the main tourist districts here in Niagara Falls and this is insane like this place is literally where I used to spend most of my time the coffee shop right there is where I'd go do all my homework from college there's actually a hotel right here behind me it's called the Sheridan on the Falls there's a Starbucks in there I used to work there for like almost a year and a half and that was basically what I was doing the whole time I was in college. This is, this feels so good guys. I'm honestly so excited right now. From world-class casinos, dining, arcades to amazing adventures including zip lining over the falls and rafting, this town has something to offer for everyone. The Hornblower boat tour is hands down the best way to experience Niagara. This boat tour starts in the Niagara River and ends in the dense mist of the American Falls and you can expect to be fully drenched by the end of it. And if you're visiting in the summer, you will be greeted by a spectacular light and fireworks show at night over the falls. Montreal is one of my favorite cities in all of Canada and also the most fascinating one to visit. It is the second largest city in the country after Toronto and is predominantly French speaking which is really what makes it so unique. While walking the streets of Montreal you will come across impressive architecture, amazing restaurants, bars and museums. Not only that but Montreal is also known to have some of the best nightlife in all of North America and its streets are buzzing with lively crowd usually till pretty late at night. Montreal also hosts some world class music festivals every year and has something for every genre you can possibly possibly imagine. My favorite thing to do in the city is walking down the narrow cobblestone streets of old Montreal and admiring the beautiful historic architecture. This section of the city also has many upscale restaurants, cafes, boutiques as well as some important buildings including the Notre Dame Basilica. Whistler is known around the world for being a top ski and snowboarding destination but if that's not your thing there's still a plethora of other activities like hiking, snowshoeing, ziplining and bungee jumping that can be enjoyed here. The stunning views of the mountains are endless and nothing compares to seeing it with your own eyes. Whistler is also home to Black Home which is one of the largest ski resorts in North America and attracts tourists from all over the world. Alright guys I'm out here in Whistler British Columbia right now with my $2 snow carpet that I bought from the dollar store and I'm going to be sliding down this hill right here while laying on this carpet. The rest of the squad is already at the bottom of the hill, so we're gonna go meet up with them. All right, so we're about to go down. <laughs> wow, this was a bit of a rough ride. So it took one more run and now I'm back here with where the rest of the squad is. That still isn't enough, then you should ride the peak to peak gondola which holds the world record for not just the longest but also the highest free span of any lift in the world and you'll get to see some of the most incredible panoramic views of the mountains. And when it comes to finding the right accommodation, there's so many options to choose from. From world class hotels for luxury travelers to cozy hostels for those on a budget, Whistler has something for everyone. I personally stayed in the Pangea Pod Hotel which is located in the Whistler village and for $35 night I had my own little pod to sleep in with lots of privacy and I also got a welcome drink on arrival. 
For most people, when they hear Canada, the first city that comes to their mind is Toronto, and for all the right reasons, this world-class city is the financial, entertainment, and cultural hub of the country with more than 60% of its population being from outside of Canada. Toronto is world-renowned for its diversity, and here you will find people from every single ethnicity in the world, which also makes it a paradise for food lovers because there's so many international cuisines you can try in this multicultural hub. The Toronto skyline is iconic and displays everything you might expect from a highly developed North American city. The skyline features a large number of skyscrapers accompanied by the CN Tower which is lit up every night with bright and vibrant colors. And right across from the downtown is the Toronto Islands where you will find lots of greenery, beaches and even an amusement park. The sunset from the Toronto Island is absolutely spectacular as you will get to look at the city skyline reflecting over the water while all the colors change from day into night. From high-end shopping, chic bars and restaurants to local markets, parks, museums and cafes, Toronto has it all. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. You might be wondering while the landscape looks a little bit different behind me that's because i'm currently not in canada i was just a little late in shooting this outro for the video but yeah please don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed and i will see you guys in the next one peace out